I'm sure you'll be able to agree with this one, but I get really frustrated when a buyer purchases an item, but they don't actually go on to pay for it. Uh, it's been 24 hours. Got my money? Oh, I, you know what? Just give me till next Friday. I'll... <laughs> I've become really ruthless over the last couple of months and I'm actually sending off payment reminder messages within the first 24 hours of a sale coming in without the payment actually coming in. And if they don't get back in touch with me, the very next day I'm sending them another message saying, when can I expect payment? You could go ahead and turn off, uh, you know, five days worth of time to pay for the item and you could say you're looking for immediate payment, but I actually think that could be a detriment to your sales. I think a really good way to continue to pick up sales and not lose those sales that don't come through with immediate payment is by sending off those messages pretty much within the first couple of hours if they haven't paid. All right, this next little sales hack comes with the best offer feature. First of all, you've got to enable best offers. That's a no brainer. You've got to be doing that for every single one of your listings. 50% of my sales are use of best offers, either sending or accepting, but there's a couple of hacks. First one is I send them out straight away. I don't stockpile them throughout the day and then at night time shoot them all off. The minute I see a best offer is able to be sent, I'm sending it for 5%, but this is the best little hack that I've got for you for the best offer. And that is I'm sending personalized messages with the best offer. So generally it's relating to postage and trying to give them the incentive that I'm actually gonna ship this thing out like right now. Like I'm doing my post right now. If you were to buy this item, I would be putting it in a bag within the next 10 minutes. You can be as direct as that with your personalized messages and that person's gonna see it on their phone or on their laptop and they're gonna see that, hey, if I was to go ahead with this 5% discount, I could get it in a couple of days time and that could get them over the line as well. So catch them hot with the best offers and always send a little personalized message to try and incentivize that sale. Okay, the next little hack is regarding uh, filtering the most watched items in your store and then adjusting the price really ever so slightly just to get an alert sent off to those people that are watching and hopefully get the sale converted. I've done that and I've seen the sales come through from it on a number of occasions. So every now and again, not over the top, but maybe once a week, I'll go ahead and do that. And it's a very simple process as well in your eBay seller hub to just filter by the most watched items. Uh, and then from there, I just manipulate the price by taking at, at most 5% off the price. From there, they will get an alert that there's been a price change in the item that they're watching, and that might get them over the line to com uh, confirm the purchase of the item as well. So um, rather than building up all of these watches, why not send them an offer and get the sale done? So I think it was back in October, maybe November last year, I went to an eBay seller event and uh, it was really, really eye-opening. There was a lot of statistics that came out of it that was, um, yeah, quite accurate, to be honest, it, it shocked me. And one of them was the free postage model uh, when it comes to your, your shipping charges. Now, 70% more sales resulted from listings that had free shipping rather than calculated or charged shipping. I've always done free postage because I always believe that that is the best the best way to market your product is to say that there is a free postage component to it. People will actually search for free postage items. So it's just a huge benefit to have it. You're not ever gonna be out of pocket. A lot of people get scared off and they say, yeah, it sounds great, but why would you wanna sacrifice the cost of that postage? And you're not sacrificing it. It's bundled into the listing price. So if you're trying to sell an item for $30, you're gonna list the item up as $38.95 free postage to account for the postage charge that you've gotta pay of $8.95. So 70% more sales are coming through on eBay's standpoint. I think that's a pretty alarming statistic if you're not doing free postage to move yourself across to that model. And it's also another massive win I see with the free postage when it comes to international sales because like I just explained, you've got your domestic post already set up in the price point of a buy it now and somebody internationally is seeing that price, confirming the purchase of that price and then they're paying their international shipping charge on top of that. So you're actually getting a double postage charge win, if that makes sense. You're picking up the $8.95 and you're also picking up a $20 international rate as well. So it can really significantly help you on an international sales front. And it's also gonna obviously help you make more sales as well based on the eBay data. So these next two points, I'm gonna put together as one big super answer. And what I'm referring to here is just a couple of different housekeeping duties that I like to do on a daily basis to make sure my eBay store is in best condition. And what I'm referring to here is making sure that every single question that you have is marked as complete. And you might get into a buying conversation and then that person, that buyer, that potential buyer messages you the word thanks to round out the conversation. I'm actually going into the messages and I'm marking that question as answered. That word thanks, that message that's come in, 
mark it as answered because in the eyes of eBay, if you don't, it looks like an unanswered question and they wanna make sure that you're responding to every single piece of customer feedback. So it's just a little bit of a tip that I like to make sure I'm doing. And the other one as well is I'm issuing off buyer feedback straight away. So as soon as I do the post, if I've got 10, 20, 30 odd uh, pieces of feedback that I've got to issue off, I don't like to stockpile all of those. I like to make sure that they are sent off uh, to the buyers to give them nice and positive feedback. So just a couple of little housekeeping duties, like I said, doesn't necessarily guarantee you more sales by doing it, but it certainly keeps the algorithm ticking along for you. All right, offering coupons. This has been a big one for me over the last six months. Not sure how long eBay's had it around, but the minute I sort of found out about it, I started to use it right away and it's been working really well for me. You wanna give these customers every single incentive to buy, free postage, best offer, promoted listings, coupons at checkout. That's when, That's been a massive one for me. I basically had a promotional code there at checkout for them to be able to use and they get 10% off any single item in my eBay store. Now I'm aware that there's gonna be a coupon activated when I put my listing up. So I'm actually putting on an extra five, 10, $15, whatever the case may be, per my listing price to account for the fact that the strike rate of my coupons are getting taken up at about 80 to 90% of my sales. So chances are, if you have a coupon active on every single one of your listings, it will be used. So when you're uh, accounting for that in your, uh, in your build at your price point, just put that extra 10% uh, onto the listing and then you shouldn't have any issues. But in the eyes of the customer, it's a fantastic incentive for them to wanna to go ahead and buy your item. Now I did allude to it just before in that previous tip, but promoting your listings is very, very vital to increasing more sales. It actually could be one of the most important ways or easiest ways to generate more sales. And yeah, there's gonna be a little bit of a fee that you've got to deduct. It's at the moment 3% for every single one of my listings is an add on to the fees that I've ultimately got to pay if it sells via a promoted listing. But what you're ultimately getting out of that is you're getting two different uh, listings. You're getting a, a sponsored listing that will appear, which is basically just a higher ranked version of your listing. Um, and you're also going to obviously have that second listing, which is the organic listing, the original. So you've got the original and you've also got the promoted listing that sits right up high on search rankings. And 50% of my sales come from that really nice, highly ranked search uh, promoted. And then 50% obviously come from the organic stuff as well. So um, a really good way to boost an item that might be dormant in your store, it might have been sitting there for quite a while, um, whack it onto a promoted listing and that'll really skyrocket it up the rankings and uh, it might actually get seen and purchased. All right, this next one I'll probably do maybe once a week, but it certainly does help and it can bring you new extra sales. And what I'm referring to here is the end and relist strategy. Just grabbing all those old dormant listings that are just turning over on their 30 day loops uh, just going in and grabbing them, manipulating the price points. You can actually go into the listings tab. You can do a search via um, the items that are ending soonest. And then from there, you go down and you manipulate the price point ever so slightly. That, that little jig will cause you when you end and then relist to show up as a brand new listing in the eyes of eBay. And they're gonna rank you higher because they think it's a fresh new listing um, rather than the old dormant listing that was well ranked down the bottom there that we're probably never gonna get sold. So it doesn't cost you anything to do that feature, that little hack, but it goes a long way to keeping all of your listings nice and fresh. But I probably do it to about 40 or 50 listings and I do it probably once a, once a week. And um, yeah, I have had sales come through in the next couple of days of those items that would have otherwise probably never been found. If you've been paying attention to all of these tips, you might have noticed a bit of a trend here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to bring back to life old listings that they are gonna be at their best. They're gonna be their most prime to sell in the first 30 days. The minute they aren't, you've really gotta be spending time going back into your listings and playing with them, doing as much as you possibly can to try and get them back into life. That's really what this video is all about. The next one that I've got for you is another thing that you could do for those old listings, which is running a sales promotion. Now. I do this quite regularly and I actually have my shoes and uh, what else, my clothing, shoes and clothing, two items that I sell quite a lot of. I run a 15% off special pretty consistently. I've got one running right now for the next six weeks. I think you can do promotions for up to 45 days in length and I generally let them roll over at 45 days in length because a lot of these shoes, a lot of these clothing items were bought back when I was a beginner reseller and they weren't great items. They had terrible sell-through rates. They were sure bought at a good price but I was trying to sell them for too high of a price point and I just let them sit there for months and months on end. So now I'm going, right, how can I go in there and manipulate them to make them look more attractive? And generally that is always based around price point. So now I'm going in with this 15% off uh, promotion and I'm categorizing every single one of my shoes and my pieces of clothing to have that discount. So you can do the, the entire store, you can blanket your whole store for a short 48 hour sort of a frenzy sale 
or you can pick them via categories, or you can just personally just pick each ones that you want to put on sale. But running a sales promotion is, again, another way to get eBay going, hey, this one's got a bit of a, a special happening on it. Let's just put it back up the rankings and try and get this thing sold. If you don't do that, it's just going to continue to stay down there and you will never get it sold. All right, the next one is very, very important. And I'm talking about shipping and handling and shortening the time that it takes for you to get the order out to the customer. There's a lot of companies out there that are doing super fast shipping and handling. And to be competitive, to even be competitive in the eyes of eBay and the sellers on the platform of eBay, you've got to have a really quick shipping and handling time. And for me, it is same day, one day at worst. As soon as the item sells, I'm putting it in a bag and I'm sending it off. And really, I, even if I'm, I've got the privilege that I am a full-time seller and I can focus on that. But even if you are a nine to five sort of a worker and you're going out and doing that work and then coming home and you're focusing on eBay, rather than listing, I would make your first priority to do anything that sells and then from there, try and get some more listings in, in, uh, into, the, into the store as well. But shipping and handling, it has helped me so much from initially having it three days, then bringing it into two, and now having it same day, one day, I'm seeing so many more sales come through just because I'm providing better service for my buyers. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, guys. Remember to subscribe. If you haven't yet subscribed, it'd be great to get you on board. We're at 15,000 subscribers. We need a few more. We always want a few more. This community is building really, really quickly, and I'm very stoked about it. Um, I'm gonna leave you with a video right here, which is a bit of a beginner's guide. If you're new out there and you're just sort of getting into the swing of eBay, go and check that video out. It should hopefully be able to help you. Thanks very much, guys. Look forward to catching you in the next video. We'll see you soon.